Boys and girls, welcome aboard. Uh, you might be like, wow, there's no lighting. That's because if you look behind me, it's kind of blurry, but it's 31 degrees in my room, so I'm not turning on any lights today. But welcome aboard. We're doing the first Deccan fight of this brand new set, set 9, the first break ride set, and we're going to be covering my favorite archetype so far, the archetype I was most hyped about from this set, which is Eradicator. So there is a lot of variance to this deck, honestly. Eradicators have so many different builds right now that have been topping events, you know, the Vanguard Zero Championship qualifiers and stuff like that. But I kind of have my own build of it. It's actually very similar to one of the uh, tops from the Vanguard Zero Championship second qualifier, one of the Eradicator tops from there. But we're going to look at that and I'll explain my choices as well as why I don't run certain cards over others. All right, so let's take a look at that list of mine that I was speaking about. And of course, finally, Naoki is an unlocked character too. So this is what the list looks like. So we're looking at a mostly eradicator name list, but we have some non-eradicators as well. So what are the key cards? So our break ride, if you don't know what a break ride is, it's a limit break four ability. Basically, when you ride on top of a break ride unit while you're on limit break, you do certain effects. So his effect is when you ride on top of him while on limit break four, you give your the vanguard you rode uh, plus 10k power, as well as you retire the front row, one of your opponent's front row rear guards. So it's basically a free retire that works very well with both of your boss units, both Gauntlet Buster by activating his critical, as well as Descendant by giving you a more extra chance to just attack into the face uh, to push them to 5 damage. So speaking of those boss units, we have Gauntlet Buster Dragon. So this is Naoki's ace. So Gauntlet Buster says, let me break 4. When a card, your opponent's card is retired, your opponent's rear guard, sorry, is retired by your, your card's ability for that turn he gains plus 3k and plus one crit so this ability essentially lets you just kind of play mini mlb in the sense that you have like decent power as well as the static critical except this will this can actually stack with each retire so you can retire one from the break ride and then use like i don't know your death scythe or something to retire another unit on your opponent's side of the field therefore enabling two extra crits on him so that way you can like swing with him with three crit and take out your opponent's PGs or even end the game early if they didn't draw into one. His second ability helps with that as well. Vanguard Sword Combust 2 and you retire an opponent's regard randomly prioritizing the back row. So this against most decks just will snipe random boosters. Against Aquaforce though you can hope to snipe their Diamantes and Basils in the back and Aquaforce is still very popular right now so this is a pretty nice ability with that in mind. So just like a nice boss unit to go into just to like have this like crit pressure to punch your opponent with and it honestly just feels pretty good. Then, the other boss unit that often finishes things off, which is Kai's ace, is Dragonic Descendant. So, he got his big buff, Limbrick 4, once per turn. When he attacks, for that battle, he gains the following ability. At the end of that battle, if the attack did not hit, so if either they perfect guarded, or if you swing with like an 11k base into their 16 after they took a damage or something, then, if it didn't hit, you count plus 1 and discard 2 Eradicators. So, specifically, Eradicators. And then, you stand him draw two cards and for that turn he gains a crit so this is a very punishing ability because you get to cycle two cards in your hand and on top of that you get to also gain a crit and push them for even bigger powers that's very nice and so of course on top of that he also has his own ability to combat two and give him plus 5k so you can get over defensives and stuff like that in case you need to but you use that effect pretty rarely but of course a great finishing unit but we don't really ride it until your opponent's at like four or five so that's why we have him as a heal because we do want to actually ride our other four ofs earlier than that our one of is Electric Shaver, uh, basically just the other break ride. His skill is when you break ride on top of him, your Vanguard gains plus 10k. And the following ability, when you retire an opponent's rear guard in the front row by your card's ability, you may also retire the unit in the back row of that unit as well. So, for example, if you would break ride with, uh, let's say, Dungaree Unlimited, and Dungaree Unlimited retires the front row, his effect would say, okay, retire the back as well. So this break ride is used more in like Dungaree decks, but it's still a pretty nice one to go into because, for example, you can still like ride over Gauntlet Buster and then just use one of your other retire cards to get rid of that and still be able to pop two cards at the same time, thus giving Gauntlet Buster even more crit, which is pretty nice. So then looking at our grade twos, we have Zuitan. Zuitan is an Eradicator. His skill is when he, his attack hits a Vanguard, you may, uh, if your Vanguard is an Eradicator, use Soul Charge 1 and Counter Charge 1. So basically a counter charger that is restricted for eradicator vanguards but it also soul charges and at first you might be thinking why are we even soul charging well there's going to be a new boss unit in the future called sweep command dragon that uses the soul but for now i was like well if we're soul charging so much let's just run more rising phoenix because that lets us turn our soul into new cards and like <clears throat> you might be like oh well 
this is not a eradicator, so I can't discard it for my Dragonic Descendant. But the thing is, you just put him down, Soul Blast 2, and draw into what most likely will be an eradicator. So for that reason alone, it's an extra plus one that you can easily you can easily have like four or even six soul per game with this build. So three Rising Phoenix is honestly perfect. Some people even run four, so that's how far they go with this card. So that's another card. Then we have the uh, Saucer Cannon Wyvern. His skill is when placed, Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, Cannon Blast 2, and retire one of your opponent's front row rearguard. So, clean and simple, this is kind of like the go-to rearguard to activate your Gauntlet Busters, and he's also an Eradicator, so that's why we run 4. Speaking of Eradicators, we have the Eradicator 12k Attacker, so also, you know, good for getting over, just hitting your opponent's Vanguard without a boost, and all those things that 12k Attackers are good for. And then I finish it off with 2 Dragonic Death Ties, so this isn't a Eradicator, but it's still good because you can pop annoying things in the back row that you wouldn't normally be able to touch, or also just, again, be like another two copies of this card to be able to activate your Gauntlet Buster's extra crit ability or clean out the front row to swing in with the uh, Dragonic Descendants. That's also very nice. So then on top of that, we have our grade ones here. The most important one I would say is Shuki. Shuki's effect is when you retire an opponent's rearguard by an ability, he gains plus 3k for that turn. So he can basically be like, he can make 21k columns very easily for you with your grade 3 rearguards. And that way you can go like, you know, swing rear, swing rear, get them to 5 and then swing with Descendant for game. Or like, you know, to take out the BG and then swing for game. So he is very self explanatory. Then we have the uh, Demolition Dragon. So during your turn, in the front row, rearguard circle, if your Vanguard is an Eradicator, gains 3k. So 10k attacker. Uh, four of the new PGs, because we do want to be given our our Limit Break for the Break Rides, you know, for all the Limit Break abilities, so we're running the new one, also it's an Eradicator, so we like the archetype name, and then as I talked about, uh, Rising Phoenix, and finally, the starter is Linchu. Linchu says, when he boosts an Eradicator and the attack hits a Vanguard, you make almost one and put him into the Soul, and then you choose any of your opponent's rearguards and retire it, so... This effect can be used against like starters, against grade ones, against some matchups, but against stuff like Aqua Force, you can wait for them to put a Basil or a Diamantis to the back and pop it. But keep in mind that their Maelstrom Limit Break might take him out instead, so keep that in mind. But he's a very great starter, got a huge buff, being able to retire anything. You know, if they leave up a grade three in the front row, you can take that out too, and you know, stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Or if they like try to play defensively and put their grade twos to the back for whatever reason, maybe like some unplaced ability like a self damager, you can also punish that. So very cool starter. And overall, very nice deck. We run 9 draws, 4 heals, simply because you need to draw into your cards to use Descendant. Sometimes you do run low on cards in hand because you're doing a lot of, like, taking stuff out of their field, but your only real plus is the Rising Phoenix, actually. So everything else is just a minus for your opponent. So gotta be careful with that, and, you know, we do want to run the 9 draws for that specific reason. But now that we looked at the deck, let's take a look at how the deck works in-game. Alright, looks like we're playing against Nova Grappler. I'm praying that this is not my own creation. I feel like Frankenstein right now. Well, it's not really my creation, but it's the deck that I was playing on stream a lot, and it's very scary for <laughs> Eradicators and, you know, decks like that. All right, opening hand looks pretty good. I put back those PGs because I wanted to draw into other pieces. We can always find other PGs later. Okay, it looks like it's pure Beast DDs. This is a pretty good matchup for Eradicators, usually, um, unless they pull something fancy, but you can actually, like, afford to use the Linchu to take out stuff like Ridehorn. It's a very good starter, actually, um, for, um, for Beast Deities because it restands itself all the time, so it might be a prime target for that. So we're gonna see right now how we do. All right, let's hope to draw another grade one. Okay, we don't, but we got the Gauntlet Buster. I guess I'll ride the Rising Phoenix for now. You know, because right now it doesn't really matter. We can't retire anything with no Cannon Blast. He has to boost Eradicators. Sometimes I like to put him to the side as well, because that way you can... If you're given 4 damage, you can activate his skill in the battle phase before your Vanguard attacks and get the extra crit on the Golem Buster. But it looks like this game we're going to use it earlier than that, so that's only against certain matchups that we would do that. So we see a Death Scythe go to the bottom. Again, if you're curious how I got these sleeves, they are VBT09 Japanese box box toppers. We're probably going to get them in English too, but if you're interested in those kind of codes, I do give them away to my YouTube channel members and Twitch subscribers, so the people that, you know, put money down to support my channel, I like to give something back as well. So, it's going in for an 8k, searching that Azure Dragon. Ooh, SP Luminal. It's the first time I've ever seen that. Looks pretty good. All right, going to put the power on the right horn. Not doing too much so far. We whiff a heal, but that's fine. We have both great threes in hand, so we can see how the game goes and decide how we're gonna do it. He finds, ooh, SB. This guy looks like a pretty big Nova Grappler fan. I don't recognize them, but pretty cool. Okay, let's get into it. All right, Golem Buster comes to my hand again. Let's ride the Spark Rain. 
I guess I'll just take out the starter here. I'm gonna lose a booster though, which is a bit unfortunate because then it's gonna be harder to push damage later on. So maybe I can wait, but honestly they can pop off pretty hard with their Azuri Dragon turn. So I think I need to play it safe and just take it out here. And not mind the fact that I will be sacrificing a counter blast here. He gets a heal too, that's pretty unfortunate. I wonder if he's going for the break right play or he's gonna go for just a Zerg Dragon immediately. Because a Zerg Dragon works with zero counter blast, so that's what I'm a bit afraid of. Because, like, people don't talk much about pure beast TDs, but the deck is actually pretty strong. Like, if you don't, uh, like, play around it carefully, they can just, like, you know, put down a board and just restand it and suddenly you're at 5 while they're at 1, you know. So it's like, you gotta be careful against that. So let's see which... Which, uh, okay, he's going for a Zer Dragon. That's what I was wondering, is which one is he gonna go for? All right, Energy Charger to draw cards. You know, all of these, like, you know, clones, basically. Oh, okay, he's only gonna push two damage. I'm not sure if that's because he doesn't have... I, mean, I think he's just keeping it for later. We get ourselves a Descendant, so we heal down, so we'll only go to two damage maximum. So that's a second heal too, so that's kind of nice to see. This is a draw trigger, so... He doesn't get any triggers apart from that. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so we're gonna stay at one damage, which is pretty good for me. I'm gonna probably just trade into rears here and try to, like, play a bit conservatively. I don't want to go overboard. I wanted to let the voice line run, you know. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool. Hearing Naoki say all these cool voice lines is genuinely pretty cool. Alright, so I'll swing Vanguard first, in case we heal. Heal down to zero. Can't complain about that. Okay, we get a draw. I'm debating here if I want to actually just push face damage, because that will allow me to finish it off faster. That's the thing. Okay, he gets a draw, so we're, we're just going to swing at the rear. But, I mean, he got the draw to, like, so repl replace his rear, basically, so... It's not going to be too big of a deal for him either. Pretty interesting running the heal on Ethix instead of the Yamatana Drake because I don't know. I mean, I guess you want to usually ride Yamatana Drake earlier. Okay, here comes a Luminal. So I guess he rode the Zur just for the sake of cross riding. Oh no, he had another one. So he's just gonna take it easy, I guess. Slowly push me. Gonna probably use that 18k column to swing face. Yep, 21k column. Swinging in, no limit breaks yet, so this will take me to three. So far we're just kind of pacing ourselves out, like it's a very paced out game. That's kind of what it feels like. Very peculiar. Don't often have these kind of games. Alright, so I guess I'm gonna push him to three as well. Because I mean, this will swing for 14 unboosted. I want to keep this for the Gauntlet Buster turn because I'm pretty sure I'll still go for Gauntlet Buster here. Otherwise we can do a Descendant turn too. Alright, I feel like calling these two down and just trading rears. Because this can swing into Vanguard on its own. So, it's 14 from its own skill. So we push him to 3 here. He can't even heal out of it either, so I'll just take out the rears. You know, they're beast deities, so they are targets. He keeps getting draws though, which is perfectly fine. But, let's just trade out the rears. You know, his other beast deities are much better, of course, because they get power from restanding, but... These 11Ks are pretty nasty in their own right. But of course, if he has a self-damager, he can self-damage into uh, Limit Break 2 in order to restand the front row. But it won't do too much for me when I'm at 3 damage, to be honest. That's the only thing. And I'm pretty sure he'll push me to 4 here. But I'm feeling more like a Gauntlet Buster turn here than a Descendant. I'm not sure, to be honest. Oh. I think he's going ham. Or he has so many PGs, he's not even worried. That could also be the case. Okay, we get no defensive, so looks like we're gonna go to 5 here. Doesn't find an Azur. I think he's already seen most of his Azurs by now. Alright. I'm gonna take this one to the face, to the dome, as people like to say. He fails to heal, which is good, but we go to 5. Now I need to think about this. How do I want to act? We get a draw into another Shaper, okay. Not Shaper, the, the other one. Saucer. Hmm. I think I need to go for Gauntlet. Because my Descendant will be too big. Even if I can get two... Maybe if I can get two attacks into the face, it's a different topic. But... Because then I can do a 24k swing. But then I'm only pushing him to... No, I actually can't. I need to go for the gauntlet. Oh, 
Alright, you got to hear the beautiful voice lines from Naoki. You don't hear them on the Kai skin. You only hear the Descendant lines. Alright, so... Let's play around like this. I'm just gonna charge up. He put down that PG pretty confidently. That's the only thing that kind of bothers me. Is how confident he was in putting down that PG. Can't say I'm a big fan. So here... I'm not putting down the Shuki yet. Because I'm still thinking if I want to just stop here. Because... I could stop here. And basically be in the situation where... I can just like attack with this and pass. Um, without giving him limit break. Because it seems like he's not running self damagers. And then I can just like... You know... But then at the same time, I kind of want to push him a bit. And if I can push him to 4, then he can't heal out. And if I have double intercept, I don't think he can kill me. Because he can go bop, bop, face, PG check, and then... Uh, I guess he could restand and kill me. It's too risky, actually, to give him the limit break. I'm just going to swing with the Vanguard. We swing with the Vanguard, maybe check a heal or something. But I don't think there's many left. There's only one. Okay, it came through. It came through. Uh, maybe now I, I can push. Maybe now I can push. Now I think I can push, because then he'll go rear, rear, van, push me to 5, and then van, van, and both PGs check. So I think that's safe enough. Oh, he keeps checking these draws. But I'd rather he see them now than later, I guess. When I'm trying to go for the kill with Descendant. So, I guess that's that. <laughs> but that was indeed my last heal. So I gotta be careful now. Luckily, I have a rear ready for next turn, in this like weird way. Blank Marsh could be bad. But he has to actually deal the 5th damage with his Vanguard. So his Blank Marsh won't do anything. It's just going to be a booster. So he's going for that play I mentioned, basically, where he's going to try to take out my stuff. Ah, but now we're, we have a problem where I no longer have Retire. But I needed those 2 Intercepts, so I had no choice there. Right, so he's going to stand his things there. That's going to be a 20 and an 18. Oh, hold on. That shows me everything I need to see. That's a PG, that's a PG, and then he just twin drove two PGs, did he not? He did, yeah. So now I can just stay on Gauntlet and use a skill twice and that's the end of the game. And that's literally it. He cannot do anything else. So let's just do that. Stay on Gauntlet. Stay on Gauntlet. There's no point to do anything else than to stay on Gauntlet. I don't even need to, like... Man, that's strange. But So I just use Gauntlet twice, and then I can take out the intercepts with my with my attackers, so that's perfectly fine. So that's good. That's very good. Alright, use it again. Literally just to amp up the criticals. That's all I care about. And that's a concede, because... I mean, he would have to pray for a heal, but he called down that PG that would have literally saved him if he didn't. But, yeah... Cool, let's do another one. So that's literally like eradicated. You just read the flow of the game. If you got an early push, you can go for Descendant. Otherwise, you can just like go like, okay, Gauntlet crit. And then you see how much your opponent's deck can do. If they can kill you, you stop there. And it's just kind of like, you know, this damage denial thing. Because if they take it, they die. Ooh, we're playing as Genesis. And with the Summer Misaki skin. I'm sure a lot of you guys are happy about seeing that. You'll see it when I do the Genesis video myself. Because I already got it. Okay, this is an interesting hand. Uh, Zuitan is always a great ride. I kind of want to hold on to the Descendant, because going second, we can actually, like, play it, you know? I'll show you what I mean, if we can run into it. Okay, we redrew the, the Descendant, so that's two heals gone. But I'm not too bothered about it right now, I guess. Ooh, it's not the right chain either, so this is going to be probably an Iwanagahime type of build, maybe? I don't know. Rides the Melissa. So, that's interesting. Okay, passing. I wonder if he's running the grade 2 of the right chain. That's like the thing that I'm most curious about right now. Let's ride the Shuki. So, this is a starter we could take out, but it's kind of plus 2 to Soul Charge 3. So it's like, pretty expensive. If it's an Iwanagahime build, maybe it's fine to take it out. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. Because there's no other grade 1s in the back, apart from this actually. This is the only other grade 1 that does the exact same thing. Um, that I could take out. Apart from that, I mean, there's not much. Alright, Rise the Chamomile, that's a perfect soul setup too. So in terms of right targets, that's quite good. I wonder if he's not running the 
Artemis then. Yeah, looks like just you want Nakahime with stands. That's interesting. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I see you, I see you. Alright, my PG fizzles. Unfortunately, but I have one in hand, so I'm kind of okay. I think we just ride the Zuitan here and just kind of like go in? Question mark? Because I can set up the Shuki boost later, which I probably will. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go in and swing and take out that starter because it will become pesky if I don't. It can get really annoying. Alright, so. Deal one damage. Second stand. Second Yon Nagahime gone. So far there's only one type of trigger. So we take out the starter now. Kaching. And then just like the God of the Interaction, the Zuitan will counter charge for us and soul charge. Ooh, the break ride is gone. Would have liked to ride that, but it's okay. We can work around it. <sighs> okay, she has the break ride. So she's going to go for some kind of like... I guess that's the thing, right, with Iwanaga Hime is that she doesn't have on attack soul blast, but you can still give her the on attack soul blast through the break ride skill. So here we're going to get smacked for one, get a draw trigger. This will still hit, so we're going to get pushed to three. So unfortunately no break rides, but we can just ride the Descendant and just sit on it. And just Descendant being there is pressure enough. Wow, SP Artemis, that looks pretty as hell. Oh, Soul Charge the heal there. It's a lot of stance too, because this deck doesn't actually draw that much until you actually use Himiko's skills, so I wonder. I wonder what the... Like, if you're running 9 stands in this, like, can you actually sustain yourself that long? It's pretty interesting. Alright, so... Sadly, no Gauntlet Buster, or uh, Bowing Sword, we just ride Descendant. Sadly, uh, Naoki doesn't have a line for a Descendant, which is normal, I mean, he never he never had a Descendant, per se, so it's fine like that. Alright, so this deck does not have any Retire, so I can kind of like safely play these cards down. I might even not play that down yet, I'll play the other Descendant I have in hand, for now, just to let him push me a little bit. Ah, but I should have maybe played the, the Intercept anyway. Because I only have one PG, so if he has Break Ride, he can actually push out a lot of attacks here. But then if he has the Iwanaga Hime, she can retire my front row anyway. So it's like, you know, it's hard to say how much it matters that you have the Intercepts or not. Okay, we get a Draw Trigger into the uh, 12k Attacker. Oh wait, shit, I didn't realize that this thing doesn't gain power on attack. Whoops, that was nearly a misplay. Whew, my opponent could think big BM. Because I'm so used to the break right gaining 3k when you attack. Wow, that was almost... Almost punished, but never punished. <laughs> Let's be real, never punished. Let's see here, where is the... Ooh, Himiko over Himiko. That's interesting, because she has to now... Call at least one attacker. And then swing with Vanguard to Soul Blast another column. So it looks like she's not ready yet to do her Iwanaga Hime turn. Or... I'm not too sure. I really am not too sure what the thought process there was. But we'll take it, question mark? <laughs> not sure what to say, honestly. Alright, here comes the Soul Charge 1, and now Soul Blast 3. Draw 2, put 1 into the Soul. And of course, she can call out the Chamomile, as well as the uh, Melissa, for an extra column. Or she can choose to keep them in the Soul for now, and do that explosive play when she wants to actually unleash Hell. So, but we've given her a limit break, so as long as she doesn't heal here... What did she soul blast? Okay, she is going to make that column. Who did she put in soul? Okay, no more extra attacks. But even if she drops like a stand on me here or something, and just like buffs it up here, right? And I don't get a defensive, and she goes like, bop, me to five, then I can still PG that and survive. So then, I will be looking to... Okay, so that's a 22k column. Here she can rip a stand. She does. That's her fourth Iwanaga Hime. So this will be a 16. If I don't get a defensive, I will go to 5, and this will try to go for lethal. It will fail, though. We get a defensive, so now this will swing into the rear guard instead, which is perfectly fine. Um, and then she has three cards in hand. I think she soul charged the PG. Never mind, she has not. So this will swing me into 5, but because she is now at 4, she cannot, like, heal, so I can actually swing for lethal with the Descendant if I do hit. So let's see how that works out. Alright. This might be the rare opportunity to see me use Descendant's Counter Bus 2 effect. Very rare. Very, very rare. Alright. We're gonna stay on Descendant here. Call down the 12k attacker. Then call down... This. 
I want to call down this, but then put it back and call down the other 12k attacker, basically. I think I will do that. Or I can just use Descendant, actually. I mean, Death Scythe. Death Scythe. So he's Death Scythe. Pop this. Shuki gets power. I want him to be able to carry my Descendant in case of failure. So... Then I'm going to put this back and take the 12k attacker out in here. Then we're going to use a Descendant to gain some power here. Keeping the one counter blast available. So now, I want to basically hit with this. Hit with this attack. First. And now if he doesn't get defensive, there's a PG gone as well. So this will normally be uh, PG'd. Let's see it. And if I get a trigger, I can put it on here for yet another attack. So that's quite good too. So Rising Phoenix followed by Perfect Guard. That's fine. So Perfect Guard comes through. And now Descendant's Effect will activate. Let me break. Discard two Eradicators. Bada bing, bada boom. The visual effect of Descendant is insanely good. Like, he like pulls out a sword and just like rises up. It's actually very, very cool. And then we can swing for 26 with the crit here. Get a draw so this one can potentially end the game if necessary. If it doesn't end here. Alright, we have two intercepts and a PG. Okay, he still gets PG, that's fine. Does he have the final one in hand? Does! Wow, okay. Okay, so no cards in hand. Has to top deck a grade 3 to break ride. Otherwise, has to swing into my rears. The worst would be if he ride draws an Iwanagahime, but he doesn't actually have any more. And if he had the Camomile, and... Like, if he had Battle Phase Soul Blast right now, I'd be dead. Ooh, but stand triggers will still ruin me. Wait, but I think he's out of them. He runs five stands, four draws, I think. I think. Let's find out. It's getting pretty exciting. The stands here would actually punish me really hard, but okay, we see Melissa and the 8k vanilla, and I'm gonna survive thanks to the perfect guard. Woo! Wow, this game is tight. This game is tight. Like, in with all meanings of the word. <laughs> In all senses of the word, this is a tight game. Alright, I don't need to write anything, really. There's no retiring that's gonna be happening anymore. And my battery's gonna die. Alright, this game is literally next to being over, so I'm gonna go without the battery because I don't have time to replace it anymore. But let's just end it right here, right now. Just swing in here with these columns. He has two heals left. Let's see if he can find them. 12k attacker going in for the lethal damage. Does he have an answer in that heal trigger? Does it come through? It does not, and that's gonna be game. Alright, perfect. I honestly think those two games were perfect to show off what the deck can do, so you got to see both the Gauntlet Buster side of it as well as the Descendant side of it. So, both sides of the deck really came through and, you know, shown. You got to see the Break Ride as well, so it's pretty nice. Like, literally, all the pieces are very cohesive and, you know, the only card that didn't really show up is Rising Phoenix, actually, but I mean, that isn't that important, just an extra draw. But, as you can see, Gauntlet Buster is great for that, like, damage denial, kind of controlling Limit Breaks as well, and just kind of, like, pushing... If you can see your opponent's out of PGs, you just go in with it, you know? Whereas Descendant is kind of the opposite, where if you got a good head start, got some good early aggro in, and you know they're keeping those PGs, you just go in with it and try to end it on that very turn. So, really, really cool. I honestly really enjoy the deck. It's very fun to play. It feels very, like balanced it doesn't feel like it has a terrible low roll and doesn't have like an insane high roll either so it's like the floor and the ceiling are not that far apart but that comes together to be a very very fun and strong deck so once you know if you're playing jp i recommend trying this deck out this list honestly works very very well there's obviously uh different cards you can also use some people run like the desert gunners as well to seal intercept so that way you can try to like you know just seal intercept swing with the rear and then swing with the descendant restand and swing for game but i personally prefer to run a more eradicator heavy list and then use these uh rising phoenixes so i mean maybe that decreases my ceiling a little bit but overall it still makes the deck very very strong as you saw so there's a lot of experimentation you can do you know you can use this list as your first kind of blueprint and then see where you go with it i'm sure it's going to change over time and you know as we adapt to the meta with uh decks like eradicator so yeah that's honestly a very very fun deck that i do recommend trying out so do give it a run if you like it but on that note that's gonna be it for me today and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye